start streaming. <laughs> we should be live. It's been a little while. Uh, let me know if you can see and hear everything okay. We haven't streamed since about August of last year. And if you haven't been around uh, long enough to remember this, we used to do regular liquid nitrogen overclocking live streams. And I'm planning to bring those back. I was just talking to Joe Staponzi from Bearded Hardware about that. Uh, and uh, I got to get on a call with him and plan when we're going to do an LN2 overclocking live stream. Okay, let's see. Is this, is it working? Is, uh, what's chat saying? Once we're all on the same, same page for the audio quality, I can get going with the task here. Let's see. Cool. Okay. I saw someone say, hey, Steve. So maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. I have no idea yet. Uh, okay, cool. I am seeing, I, I do see that someone says, because we were three minutes late, they will now unsubscribe. Uh, I hope we can, I hope we can earn back your subscription. Um, thank you for taking the time to type that into chat though and boosting our engagement. All right, so let's see what's chat saying. I can hear and see you all fine. I am going to choose to believe only that chat comment and ignore all other ones about audio because I have been trolled in the past about audio problems and I'm gonna believe the first one I saw. That's, that's generally how you should do things. Just blindly take everyone at their word. We have a bit of a different setup here. This is uh, a TV, very technological, and it is mounted to a, a super cool stand that I basically picked up more or less on the, on the side of the road for free. So um, that's cool. But that's in the background. We're going to try and use that today, maybe for some chat playback and when I'm looking through um, eBay listings for the CPUs we bought. Uh, let me just do a tweet and tell everyone we're live. I have to remember how to do streaming. This, I'm, I'm excited for it, though. It'll be fun to do these again. This is our first one in the new studio. We are live. First time in the new studio, which we moved into in late last year. Uh, okay, so I've sent out the tweet. Um, nice to see so much space for Steve to move around. And yes, the first time we did live streams was actually back at the house, uh, probably 2017. And we actually, we did the RIP LTT stuff then. You remember that, Andrew? Yeah. Andrew's on the camera today. Uh, and was the one who had to navigate the forest of tripods in like a 10 by 12 basically bedroom that we had set up a live streaming set in. I wasn't able to get liquid nitrogen delivered there. Um, don't know why, but they really didn't want to bring a 180 liter tank into my garage. So uh, we won't talk about that. All right, <laughs> what's everyone saying? There's a humming sound, but probably nothing you can do about it. Um, it's the air conditioning. <laughs> I mean, that's the biggest problem with this space is there is an AC unit straight above the studio. I'll just turn it up. And then when I start sweating later, everyone can hopefully know. You'll, you'll have to inform the people who join later why. All right, let me give you the, Steve, how long does it prep, take to prep for a live stream? I don't know, maybe two hours last night and then probably an hour today, hour and a half today. Um, most of that was just us remembering the things we have to do. So hopefully we got all of them. Uh, I am going to read all of the Super Chats today, at least up until a point. So you can send in Super Chats. I will read it. I'll be getting them on a 30 to 60 minute delay. If you have computer questions, you're trying to buy something, you want to ask or tell us something, send it in via Super Chat. I'll get it for you. And then also, before we get started with this five or six pound bag of CPUs, um, the I, I could have set it down a little gentler, but I think it's a lost cause. Uh, we are also doing a promo right now where for the next five days, but especially today during the stream, because we'll shout some of the orders out. If you buy something from store.gamersnexus.net, we are giving 10% of the total store revenue. That's all of the, the gross revenue from the store, 10% of it to the Cramden Institute, which handles e-waste processing and PC refurbishing. Why would we connect e-waste processing to a bag of 79 CPUs that I bought for $1 per CPU? Uh, I don't know, but we're going to find out. We'll, we'll see if the connection makes sense. I thought it did. So you can buy something like a mod mat, which by the way, I think we only have, I don't even know. I, we will probably sell out of these over the next 
two days, uh, and we're not going to have more for a couple months. So if you want a mod mat, go to store.gamersaccess.net and grab the Volt. We are down to very low quantity for these. We've got the coasters and stuff too. Okay, let's get started with the CPU bag, since Andrew's kind of pointed over here anyway. So let me check on chat. What's chat saying? Uh, let's see. Ellen to the AC. Hmm. Well, chat hasn't changed much in a year. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the context of this, I'm going to show you some video clips. We filmed this in 2020 in March. We were uh, we were in Taiwan, in Taipei, and went to. Guanahua Digital Plaza, which is a super cool market. We've done two or three videos there in the past, so you should check them out if you haven't. Um, and I think you can just type in like Gamers Nexus Taiwan Computer Market, you'll find it. And super cool place. It's this huge sprawling plaza of all types of computer parts. There's a lot of used stuff, so stuff like these bags of CPUs you can find there. You can get some really cool old hardware, like we bought these thermal probes that just haven't been made in over a decade. And this, I was walking by, uh, this is an unpublished video. So we never aired this. It was, uh, I think it was mostly just, we kind of needed some more shots to really tie it all together. And we couldn't get back to Taipei after March of 2020. Try and guess why. Uh, so we never got to go back for our extra shots. So you are going to see some uncut A-roll. And um, this is the context. So I was at this. Yeah, we got it. I should send KFC a bill. We got this um, uh, night market, or not night market, it's actually just a market. Uh, and the thing that caught our eye was this box of CPUs. How's that looking on the screen, Andrew? Like for uh, reflections and stuff. Not too bad. You want me to turn off the lights over here? <laughs> we need an overhead projector, too, just to really get that vibe. Okay. Uh, so this was the context of what got our attention. Let me cross here. And um, they were charging 50 Taiwan dollars each, I believe is what that says. And uh, that was, it was almost $2 per CPU. And, um, I thought it would be a fun video clip if I basically bought all of them. So we talk about it for a little bit to the camera. And I go through some other stuff. Like, this is a box of random motherboards. I think we bought some of these, too. We'll do a different stream with that stuff. We then go through the shop. We look at uh, random, like, cool heat sinks. Let's see. This wall was really interesting. So uh, you see uh, there's modern parts, like, like these uh, liquid coolers. And there's some laptops. There's all this cool stuff behind me. And um, we looked around the shop for a bit. But let me show you what happened. If, if I can find the exact, where did I bring the box of CPUs to him? So uh, my Mandarin at this point was exceptionally bad. And I did my best, there it is, did my best to tell him I want to buy, like, hey, you know that box of CPUs outside? I want to buy all of them. Uh, there it is. OK. So that guy works for the store. And here's the, this is the full context for the video we're doing today. <laughs> so uh, I picked up the CPUs, and I said, I want to buy all of these. Uh, and we negotiated on price for a little bit. And we came out to about a dollar per CPU. He had to count them all, though. He had no idea how many were in there. The answer is 79. That's how many CPUs we bought. And um, you can see like the perfectly good brand new ones behind them that I had no interest in. Uh, so let's. Let me do, show you one last section of this, and I'll check on chat and super chat. Um, so basically, his employee goes through all the CPUs, counts them. He asked me if I want him to double check the count, as if I'm worried he's going he's gonna to short me by, by one old CPU. Oh, there was a, there's, the, there's the real reaction. You can see how he really feels about uh, me wanting to buy a box of old CPUs. Uh, I remember this is where I, I picked up the box and I just said how jong, which is just like very heavy, and he said yes, very very jong. Uh, so um, that's the that's the story. He showed us uh, this guy was super cool. I, I would, maybe I'll run something on GNX just for this. He got out some 
old hard drives. We like did some phone translation for a bit. And long story short, I walk away happy with a uh, couple kilograms of CPUs. And they didn't even stop me in the airport. So that's, I actually was worried about that. Let me check on the chat saying Steve Seption. Steve pointing at Steve pointing is killing me. <laughs> All right. Um, so now, now we can go through the CPUs. Now that you have the context of where they came from, and we're going to price some of these out. Should I get these back on, Andrew? Yeah. OK. <laughs> I've got a list of them. Patrick went through the CPUs a couple years ago, and I still have the list. But we're going to update the pricing. What's the best way to do this? OK. I think that was pretty efficient. <laughs> so uh, uh, a very um, the a very uh, mixed. I, I don't know. I think I think we can all guess at the value of these, considering I paid about thirty NTD or about a dollar each US. There you go. That one's easy. E sixty six hundred. Good start. I think Patrick may have actually labeled all of these. That'll save us some time. OK, let me check on Super Chats now that we've got the dump of parts on the, <laughs> on the table. Uh, so we've got how many people hanging out in chat right now? 2,600 people. Awesome. Thank you for joining for our first stream in like a year. And uh, you know, send the link out, let your friends know, hey, they're, they're live for the first time in a while, and they're going to look through some random CPUs. What are the Super Chats? KC uh, MSTERPCE. $20. Thank you. That helps a lot. It says, keep rocking and being awesome. KC Masterpiece. Thank you. The Gamer Reborn sent in $5 and said, hi, Steve. I'm getting ready to build my first custom PC this year, and I'm super proud of my part list. That's awesome to hear. Uh, I'm also a first timer to a stream, so hi, guys. Hello. Yeah, so uh, being confident in your, your list of parts you've selected is probably the most important thing. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity to throw this out here where um, a lot of people uh, get really excited about posting on Reddit and telling other people that they were wrong in all the stuff they chose. So if you feel pretty happy about the parts list, even if you chose something that we've reviewed negatively or someone else online is saying you shouldn't buy, as long as it works well and you're happy with it, it really doesn't matter that much. You know, the reviews are there to help and the commenters are there to help. but. Um, but ultimately, if you're proud of your parts list, that's great to hear. Uh, Pinak Sharma sent in uh, 100, I don't know that currency marker, I'm sorry, and said, create a new home server. Do you recommend having independent NAS security system and home assistant or a single beefy system with virtualized containers? That's a good question. I will preface this with, I'm not a server expert, but Wendell is. And then uh, I do have an opinion on it, though, just as sort of just as an enthusiast. So I like independent systems that are somewhat isolated because uh, I, I operate my technology in fear. And that's because um, I, I respect its power to go completely wrong when you've done nothing to cause that. So personally, I like to isolate those systems because then only one thing can break. So maybe you lose your, your, your NAS goes down for an hour. At least you haven't knocked out, what else did you list? Your security system <laughs> and, and your home assistant. If the home assistant stops working because of some software BS going on, at least it doesn't kind of, you don't have to take down the rest of your home setup to fix it. So that's, that's just my opinion on it. Uh, all right, last one I'm going to read before we get to this is Jedi Master Shark sent in $5. Thank you. Said, so you flew to Taiwan and you bought a bag of CPUs. We flew to Taiwan, again, this is from 2020, and we did a bunch of super cool factory tours that you should check out. And then we bought a bag of CPUs. Thank you very much. OK, uh, let's, let me ask the chat here. Let's get a shot of the table. And chat, please, please help me pick which one we're going to look at first. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we do this. Type one for this one. All right, yeah. That one. works. Andrew says, spam one for this CPU, spam two for this one with the black cover on it. It's a mystery. Three for this one, and let's do four for this one, and then let's see if I remember any of those. 
<laughs> All right, let's see what uh, what people are saying. What are they choosing? Operate in fear is Apple's motto. Yeah, more or less. Hey, I like how Apple has built this ecosystem. I remember talking to a neighbor probably like two decades ago, and um, I asked him why he likes Apple so much. And this was when Apple was much less prevalent. And he said, uh, I like my Mac because whenever something doesn't work, I know it's my fault, not Apple's. And I was like, ooh, that's a, that's a scary mentality. <laughs> it's like, all right, I'm seeing a lot of twos here. For I think that was the mystery one. There's some sevens. We haven't chosen a seven yet. All right, let's start with... Let's start. This one's very specific. Fourth one from the top right. Who's top right? Uh, which one is the fourth one? Let's go with this one. Oh, Comanzo's in chat. Sam, uh, awesome to see you, Sam. Thanks for coming out. It's always cool to see people who've been part of the streams for so long come out when, uh, when we have the first one in a while. So uh, this is an AMD Athlon 64. I think we're going to find a lot of these. And unfortunately, these have pins on them, which is suboptimal. Uh, so this is our, our $1 Athlon 64. I'm curious what these are worth. I like that there was at least a bit of a pin protector in there. Let's see. Let's get a shot of this if you if you can. That actually looks really good. Twitch plays CPU. Yes, but it's not Twitch. Don't get me perma banned from YouTube. <laughs> I'm just kidding. YouTube doesn't know who I am. Uh, so <laughs> that's actually that's more true than just than sad. So Athlon 64. What are our thoughts on this chat? What's everyone think? Wouldn't a poll be easier? No. There's 79 of them. How do I describe them? Uh, let's pull up eBay where I've searched for CPU and let's type in, I can barely read this. Uh, it's got so much paste on it. <laughs> Athlon 64X2. I don't have the number. AMD Athlon 64X2. What, what model is this? Let's see. So I have a list here. I can search this. Control F. Uh, AD04. There we go. Zero, zero. Uh oh. The list has broken. <laughs> oh, I think that's it. Cool. All right. I think, I think we got the part. This is a 4400. This is a 4400 plus. So the MSRP for this CPU that I bought for only 30 Taiwan dollars, about one USD, MSRP was, is this accurate? $581? No way. Athlon, it's been so long. Athlon 64X2, 4400 plus. MSRP. I can't scratch my face because I'll get thermal paste on it. Oh, it's already on the mouse. That's some, uh, that's some 15-year-old thermal paste on the mouse now. That's a good mouse, too. It's, it's not a good mouse. Price history. I don't, I don't think we need the price history. I just need the one time. Uh, what did this sell for? Well, it's um, $39 on Amazon right now. I don't think it will sell for that much. What's chat saying about this one? It's Steve's Get Rich Quick Scheme. That'd be cool. It's more like, it, it's more like get about a day's worth of food budget slowly scheme. This is, you're not getting rich quick on this, or at all. Uh, what are people saying? So I should remind everyone that even though the MSRP was at one point many hundreds of dollars, that doesn't actually really matter. Oh, here we go. We got an, an Anantech review. Man, written by Anand himself. Uh, why did he not? Where's the price? Chat, help me out. Help me verify the MSRP. Athlon 64 X2 4400 plus. Help me find the MSRP on the, like the original, original MSRP. 
Oh, oh man, I think that is right. I think it was five hundred eighty-one dollars. Let's read. So let me just read um, the what is this? Anantech Athlon sixty-four X two. Let's see. Anantech Athlon sixty-four X two review. Is this it? I think this is the right one. Nope, forty-eight hundred. Forty-four hundred plus. Okay, there we go. Let's get the conclusion. Uh, so he said, on the desktop side, we are very excited about the Athlon 64X2. He says, uh, at a price of $581, the 4400 plus is more reasonably priced of the two of the X2 CPUs. He said he's concerned about the availability of the lower cost X2 CPUs and uh, then said the 64X2 will be faster than anything else Intel has for desktop. Wow, I'm gonna go put this in my system right now. <laughs> okay, so what's chat saying? I've seen some $250 marks for, that must be for another one. Um, thank you, eBay for recently sold, we should do that. Let's check out the, the modern pricing, 4,400 plus. I am not expecting, just to be clear, to walk away from this with like, uh, we're not going to be selling these, it's not worth the time. I'd rather make art out of them. Um, where is, uh, where is sold? I feel like eBay has moved things. Sold items. $15, oh, that's a 4200 plus. There you go, $23, really? Why? Keeping old systems alive, I guess. There you, that makes more sense. Assorted AMD socket AM2 CPUs, $7. And that's shipping from Canada. That's probably coming straight from Linus's warehouse. Okay. Let's see what else, what else is there. Uh, so we do have some pluses. I don't know if this is the 4400 plus or if that's one of the other ones in this pile, but that is one of the CPUs. Let's look at the next one. Uh, 6300 core, I think that's a two, duo. Let me read it first, then we'll show. Intel Core 2 Duo, 1.86 gigahertz, two megabytes of cache. Man, they actually listed the specs on the IHS. That's nice. I, that would be sick, actually. Should we, like, do something with these? What if I did, like, um, I have an idea. Uh, what if I have an idea here? We are doing the promo for e-waste recycling charity efforts. Uh, I have an idea. Okay, so we have 79 CPUs. <laughs> I don't really know what to do with them once we're done. Um, and we also have all of these. So I, I, and I have a box of other ones somewhere else, because just basically, um, I wanna, I'm gonna level with you, chat. I have a problem. When I see a box of old CPUs for cheap, it's very hard to resist buying it. So uh, we have enough old CPUs, and I think, I, think, <laughs> uh, I think we could do without these. So for store orders during this stream, I'm going to randomly mix in CPUs with those orders. If there's more than 79 orders, you might not get one. It's not a guarantee. So if you're gonna buy something from the store, just do it because you want something from the store. That should be your first goal. But I'm gonna go ahead and just randomly mix some of these in. They don't have any value, just to be clear. So don't buy something because you're trying to get value. Um, it's really more of just if you think it'd be kind of neat to have a random old CPU, maybe you want to put it on the wall or something like that, or just say like, hey, I saw this in the stream. So we'll do that. We'll, we'll mix all these in uh, for orders done during the stream on store.gamersaccess.net. Okay, that'll be fun, because then, uh, then you guys can help me get rid of all of this. And I think Patrick will be very happy because he'll have more space to put other things, like CPUs that are <laughs> testable. Okay, uh, oh yeah, also there might be some, um, there might be some bent pins on them. They might not work. I have no idea. Okay, uh, so that was a Core 2 Duo. 
Let's look up what specific one this was. I'm going to have to tell our distributor that he needs to mix uh, CPUs with the orders. I don't know what he's going to think about that. He's going to be like, what? Do I need to pack them specially? Like, do they need ESD foam? No! They probably don't work. Uh, Tor2 Duo. Why is everything so faded? Core 2 Duo. There are a lot of Core 2 Duos. And this one specifically is Q648. Q648. Oh, no, it's not. Maybe not in the list. Maybe, maybe this one's. Oh, he did, oh, it's a 6300. He wrote it on here. Excellent. 6300. E6300. That's what this CPU is. Uh, <laughs> thinking the value is not going to be good on this one. So this is a an E6300 Core 2 Duo E6300. That's um, that's about what I was expecting. I can break even, or I can just ship it out in a box, and then you can get a dollar maybe. Uh, do we have sold? Oh, these are sold items. OK. So what, what would be our best bet here? This one went for $3. These are LGA 775. That was the second socket I built in, I think. Maybe the third. I, I think that was the third. Uh, Q6600 is what I bought. It was a quad core. It was one of the first. And that was, a, that was probably one of my best PC builds. Currently, I'm using an FX, uh, I think, 8700. Moving on, the Core 2 Duo E4400 did a lot better. Oh, lot of six randomly assorted uh, Core 2 Duos for $7. OK. All right, so we got about a dollar here. Let's set that aside in the high value pile. Go to, go to the next like streamer poker tournament and be like, I've brought my own chips. Uh, yeah, Q6600 would be awesome if we have any in here. Let's look for, so this is an E6300 uh, as well. Let's look for something interesting here. Let's do this. OK, chat, now is your time to shine. Um, I need you to choose one. <laughs> Let's go with, um, I'll point out the upside down ones. This one's got an interesting QC mark on it. So. Let's go with QC Mark chip is number one. This is number two. The unprotected chip with pins is number three, and that's four. Tell me which one we're going to look at next. Oh, thank you. I'm on an FX8350. I'd forgotten the names because it's a decade old now. 8350, I appreciate it. Uh, also, it's, it's uh, underclocked and undervolted at home because um, the motherboard I have, <laughs> uh, the Motherboard I have, the VRM was overheating when it was running stock. So I had to drop the clocks a little bit and then drop the voltage, 8350. Um, I actually, it was a, I had a 9000 series for a little bit, but I pulled it out because it was too much for the VRM on the crappy board I bought. OK, what are the numbers saying? Steve, is a little bit of paste on a socket fine? Normally, it depends if it uh, interrupts the pin to pad contact. And if so, you can spray it with CRC. I don't, oh, there's some up there, the red can up there. You can sp spray it with contact cleaner. Uh, it'll leave some residue, but it'll get the, the paste out. I'm seeing a lot of threes. People really want to see the CPU number three, which is the exposed pins one. <laughs> let's start with that then. So first off, let's have a good look at the pins. Is that a dead bug or dust? That one is dust. Uh, the pins are salvageable, I think. There's a couple bent ones in here. Um, let's see what the CPU is. Athlon 64X2. And as for which one this is, let's look this up. This is another 4400. AD044. Zero, zero, 
IAA. This is the 4400 plus. I don't think the other one was. It was a different. It was a different one. So this is. We already looked this up. This one was. I think it had recently sold for twenty dollars or something. Uh, formerly five hundred eighty-one dollar CPU. So. If we get a time machine, I guess I can go back in time and scalp this. Otherwise, uh, it will go to one of you. OK. CRC contact cleaner is a must have. 100% agree. Let me do a sidebar on this. I think, I think we can have a good educational moment for anyone who doesn't know what this stuff is. So this is what I like to use for cleaning sockets and CPUs um, and uh, anything that, like, that's such a mess that using rubbing alcohol is not really going to be good enough. So um, there's a couple types of contact cleaner. A lot of them leave residue, especially if you're just spraying thermal paste off something because it, it doesn't, doesn't disappear. It's got to go somewhere. So it'll leave a residue, which is kind of annoying. But it gets stuff clean really fast. Uh, and if you're Joe Staponzi from Bearded Hardware, you can take an AMD uh, 3950X and uh, go outside standing over concrete to spray the, the Vaseline and the thermal paste off the pins. And what you do is because you are unbelievably strong and don't know your, your own strength, you spray it once and blast the CPU to the pavement. And then you spend a few hours unbending pins. I'm looking forward to him coming back out here. I'm not looking forward to him working with another one of my CPUs with pins on it. OK. Let's do, uh, I hope Joe's watching. Let's do, let's, let me do a quick demo here. I'll show you anyone who doesn't have this stuff. So for this, I would just use rubbing alcohol on this personally. Um, but just to kind of show, do the demo here. Ready? Uh, you just spray it. Any of the paste that's along the edges will sort of liquefy, and then you take your rag and you know very easy you can do this with rubbing alcohol but the reason i like the spray is because it's really easy to get into all the cracks around stuff much better for pins uh in a motherboard if you get like thermal paste in the socket especially an amd socket where like pga where it goes in that will clean it out really well um, there's a couple versions of this i don't like the one that's a blue can i don't know what it's called i just know i don't like it and definitely sold in the u.s uh, very common in large, like, home renovation type stores. And um, the reason I don't like it is because it leaves a lot more residue than this can does. So anyway, what are people saying? Uh, what's, what's the, let's go to Super Chats here. So we have a couple ones in I need to read, and then we'll get back to the next CPU. Um, Let's see. David, $5. Thank you. Also has a cat avatar, I think, which is uh, instantly a bonus. Said, have you ever considered, quote, a man bun? Uh, don't know how to respond to that. I don't really think of things outside of computer hardware in general. So <laughs> sometimes you have to be creative with drying it, I guess. Uh, single serving friend SS. F, $5. My annual troll just to hear you mispronounce my name. Damn. I should have read the message first, because I'm pretty sure I said it the same way I said it every other stream. <laughs> Good to see you back. Uh, Relay Canada, $2. You guys should complete stuff like this on GNX. I don't know what that is. Extras. GN Extras? Hmm. That's valid. Yeah. We do have a second channel called GN Extras which I guess is now called GNX, because I like that name. Um, huh, yeah. We could probably at least pull the clip I was showing and do a quick cut of it and just upload it. That, that makes sense. Uh, let's see, next one. Andrew Maurice uh, Coleman says, sends $2, says, love all the content. Thank you. Uh, W-A-L-A-P-A-117. Greetings from the Philippines. Watching your stream because I can't sleep. Better monitor or better GPU? What to buy first? Currently 60 hertz and a 1660 super. 
I would go with a GPU, I think. Uh, but I am not much of a monitor snob. I mean, I, do we have it in this room still? Yes. Um, I don't mind monitors, for example, like this one. I got this for pretty cheap at a, um, a storage unit that was being liquidated and had a bunch of computer stuff in it. And it's like 1080p and it's perfectly fine. So I don't know, I, I use higher resolution stuff for, for work, like I use ultra wides for work. So if you're working with a lot of spreadsheets and you feel like your monitor's slowing you down, I guess do that. But for gaming, I would probably do the GPU first. Uh, next one. Let's see. Uh, Nori SS says, Der Bauer is recovering from the C19. Can you wish him a speedy recovery? <laughs> Why did Der Bauer send you? I guess, I guess a speedy recovery, Roman. We're working on his, um, his Roman's uh, Alder Lake contact plate. If you haven't seen that, it is supposed to sort of flatten out, or actually it's supposed to not bend the CPU. Uh, really interesting result. We just ran all the thermals for it. I'm looking forward to producing the video next week. Uh, Mad Crow Maxwell, five dollars. Thank you. Says all these old CPUs retro build went. I don't know. I'll pull one out of the cup here later. We'll see if it works, and then maybe we can do a retro build. Uh, Pinak Sharma says it's the Indian rupee marker and three system. It is. Uh, this was for the question about should you isolate or combine all of your different systems and technology. Uh, Menio Marseille, $5, thank you, says, when you search eBay, you should use recently sold instead of for sale. Did that. We got that one. Thank you for the message. Uh, Mustangs by Matt, $10. Do you still have the Pentium Pro I sent you? Yes. Hang on. I'll be right back. This is actually, this is pretty cool. Um, we have, oh, nice. We have a section of the studio that we haven't built out yet. And I have all the old set props back there, so we're going to figure out where to put them at some point. And this new in box Intel Pentium Pro processor, I believe, is what Mustangs by Matt is talking about. <laughs> uh, so, yes. Also, a super chat just came in from um, Alexander Schlickenmeyer, who says, Are we doing name mispronunciation now? I think I got that one, but thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll come back to Super Chats in a second. Let's do the next one. Next CPU, put that on the coaster. Is, so that was the, that was an E6300. I was just using the demo. Okay, chat, the time has come. Let's start doing, where's a Sharpie? Let's start doing a grid. Let's do it this way. You ready for this? This is like next level interactive live stream, okay? You don't just get these anywhere. One, uh-oh. <laughs> I started writing upside down and uh, I've realized I'm not going to be able to complete that task. And now I've committed to putting a one, so I have to flip it. <laughs> Two, <laughs> three, four. Let's do this. Let's make this interesting. I'll pick a few different types. Let's get one of these in. And then let's get in, how about whatever this is. All right, chat. This is your time. Spam the numbers for me. One, two, three, four. In the meantime, I get some super chats. Uh, Mir DeVry says, would you jump from 5600X to 5800X 3D? I do primarily gaming on this PC. Uh, it's an X570 with a Red Devil 6900XT. Wow, that is a high-end card. Um, I like the 5600X still. You're not missing out on a ton of gaming performance, but with the 6900XT, you will get an uplift for sure. I, I think the question is, how do you feel about spending that much money today and recommitting to AM4 socket instead of waiting till the end of this year to get Ryzen 7000. I think I personally would wait, but Ryzen 7000, you'll be buying DDR5. 
and you'll be buying a new motherboard, so it's not quite that cheap, I guess. One, three, one. No, sixes are not an option. Five is not an option. You've been disqualified. One, two, one, four, four. The system could use some work, but uh, but it's good enough. I think I, th I think I saw more ones and fours than anything else. So we're gonna do one, and then we'll do four. All right, let's see what it is. How is that possible? I flipped it over, and it says four. The blue shop towel is magic. Intel. What the hell is this? Core 2 Duo. Oh, boy. That's not a good start. 6320, I believe, is what this is. Let me put that out to get a shot. Can you see this OK from there in terms of the lettering? Let's take a look at this one. Did I say 6320? Is that what that is? E6320. We have a few different versions of this. Is this the QHEE or the SLA4U? SLA4U. OK, let's see what one that is. I should mark these off as we go. This one is, uh, this is not the engineering sample, but apparently we have one of these. And there is a QC sticker on the bottom. What does that say? Is that real? No. OK. 2008 is when this was uh, last checked. Interesting. OK, well, so it's got a, um, a QC sticker on it. And I said it is an E6320. Let's see. Do I, did I get my dollar back? <laughs> or are we in the hole on this one? Uh, uh, not seeing any 6320s. Oh, nope, that's, that's entire, that's two laptops for $89. That's not a good sign. That's <laughs> uh, a laptop. Oh, uh, no, that's a 6600. Okay, well, maybe a dollar. Maybe somewhere in that range if we're, if we're doing okay. How's chat saying? <laughs> I like this. Are you, are you streaming with Penn and Teller because of the flip and the choose a number? Is this the number you chose? It's a four on the other side. Yes. I work on, uh, I work on magic tricks in my spare time. <laughs> That's also how I have to deal with reviewing certain products too, performing magic tricks because they don't work out of the box. Uh, who's next? Got that one. Got the Pentium Pro question, 5600 question. The next one is from Apostrophe, uh, who sent $5, thank you, and said, do you think PCIe Gen 3 will significantly affect RTX 4000 series? Great question. I have a Z490 and 10850K, and I'm curious how much I would uh, limit future cards. Very good question. So first of all, we are definitely testing that, because a lot of people are going to be on Gen 3 still. Um, as for the rest, it's hard to say because the 4000 series doesn't exist yet for us anyway. Um, significantly, maybe like a 4090, you will probably start to see some impact because Gen 3 to Gen 4, we we're starting to see a little bit of impact there where previously there wasn't much on the 3000 series. And uh, Gen 4 to 5 is not much really that, that direction, but 3 to 4 or 3 to 5 there was. So. I think if you're on a 4090 or something, then depending on how you define significant, I, I would expect you'll be in a uh, high enough impact where it'll start to feel bad. But I don't know. We'll see when it comes out. Maybe it depends on the architecture, too, how much it's even exiting the card uh, to go fetch stuff. But I do think, yes, probably it will start to impact it. OK. Um, <laughs> let's see. Next one is from Tech Left Behind. Says, uh, that's a, that name is very fitting for this pile of CPUs. Tech Left Behind says, with these old AMD Athlon chips, they reused plus numbers a ton. There's, two di there's four different X24400 pluses on different architectures and dies. 
Thank you. That answers a lot about the pricing we saw on eBay. So in that case, I still don't know um, which one I have specifically. I'd have to go look up the part number, I think, or plug it in, but probably easier to look up the part number. Next one, deep fried lettuce. Yes, excellent. They tell you to eat healthy, and that's how you do it. Deep fried lettuce says, hey, Steve, just want you to know uh, I'm incredibly happy to see frequency spectrum plots for your fan tests. Can't wait to see it for the 120 fans. Me too. We're still learning how to do it, though. Um, I think for the Steam Deck, we did a pretty good job. The, we're working on sort of fine-tuning the binning, so the bin width, so to speak, of the frequency bins on the chart. Um, I think we need to fine-tune that, but I'm pretty happy with where we are right now. And uh, we've got some other really cool projects I can't talk about yet underway for that. Um, let me jump to this red super or pink super chat, and then we'll go to the next one uh, in a minute. So Amit Ambasta says, could you also suggest PC cases for extremely dusty environments? Oh my gosh, greater than 999 parts per million. Airflow cases literally are impossible to use here without daily dusting. That is a real pain. Yes, uh, Silverstone's Mammoth. Let's see if Silverstone Mammoth. I think it's called the MMO1. I am sure it is all kinds of expensive, but is that, a, is that a review by Steve from Hardware Unboxed? I think it is. It is a review by Steve from Hardware Unboxed. I wonder if he remembers writing this one. Uh, this is the MMO1. So for your question, there you, that's what I was looking for. I don't remember if it has a an actual HEPA filter in it, or if it just has a really dense filter. But you could, this thing is like, it's not high airflow, but it has very high dust prevention. So I think they were just shy of, um, of like actual IP high dust ratings, but I think this would do your, your uh, dust management pretty well. So, okay, next one. Next CPU. Uh, chat voted for four after that, so let's look at four. Um, where did I put the, wait one second. Chat voted for four and one last time. Was this your number? Getting better at it. I'm going to be on Penn and Teller Fool Us next. Okay. Let's see. Four. We have a lot of Athlon 64s. This is an Athlon 64X2, but it's a different number this time. Let's get a shot of that, and then I'll go look it up. So let's look this up. This one says Athlon 64X2 AD052001. Uh-oh. I don't think it's in the list. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to actually look this one up. A, D, is this a serial number or is this a part number? Five, zero, zero, zero. I, A, A, five, D, zero. Oh, there it is. This is a dual core. So it says Athlon 64 X2 dual core 5200 plus. 2.7 gigahertz. Uh, oh yeah, front side bus. I forgot about that. 2,000 megahertz FSB. Completely forgot about front side bus. Uh, I remembered. I was reminded of North Bridges and South Bridges with AMD's X670 recently. It's one of those. Oh man, I've been building computers for a long time. Uh, Athlon 64X2, 5200 plus. There we go. We're in the we're in the money now. Seven dollars, someone got for one of these. This one sold for a hundred, maybe even in a box. That's just collector value, I guess. I don't know. Uh, is this the same? Did ours have a plus? Does it have a plus? It does. Okay. I should note that um, this is not like. This is not like buy, sell, flea market advice for how to buy a bunch of these and then flip them. Uh, I'm just curious. So assuming I'm looking for the right things. We got seven, we got, oh, there's a non-plus $12 one. 
There's one for 20. All right. There's one for nine cents. Got quite the range. Um, the pins look pretty good. So if I sell it untested, probably will at least fit in a socket. Maybe I'll get nine cents. Maybe I'll get $8. I'd say that one's pretty good. OK. <laughs> Let's look at some other ones. Have you found any LGA 2011 chips? Hell no. No way. We bought these for like a dollar each. Definitely not. Uh, museum piece. Yeah, there you go. With the, with the box especially. So we had, how much did the bag of CPUs cost him? Um, about $79. Hey, do you want to play the video again for context? Oh, yeah. We should, um, we do have a lot of additional viewers here. Let me give you all, really quickly, because we already did this once, context. We had this um, unpublished video from when we went to Taiwan 2020 March, uh, where basically this box of CPUs is 50 NTD, so almost $2 per CPU. And we looked at it, saw it on the side of the, you know, on the sidewalk, so you know how much they care about that. They're like, please steal this. <laughs> We've had this for a long time. So I brought it in. This was the guy, that was a great place to jump to. This was the guy's reaction when I said, I would like to buy all of these. And he is like, why would you want all of these? Uh, and that was pretty much, that's how we got these CPUs. That guy was really fun to talk to about the, uh, the old hardware he's sold. So OK, that's how we got here. Try to find the oldest. Huh. That's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> Let's do the next one. Let's do number three. I should put these back in their things. Where did I put the one? I don't know. I guess it doesn't really matter. This one's not actually labeled. OK. All right, let's see this one. Is it a Core 2 Duo? It is. This is the same one I opened earlier. Or I have a lot of them. That's the 6320. OK, let's look at this one. This is an E5300. So one, it's, it is actually genuinely, I know these like don't have much value in terms of function these days, but the fact that stuff that costs anywhere from hundreds, low, you know, maybe a little under 100 to, to high hundreds, like that $600 AMD one we were looking at uh, is now a dollar is kind of crazy because ultimately the raw materials at one point were worth a lot, especially the silicon. Um, let see, so this is, 2.6 gigahertz, let's look up the E5300. Pentium E, did I say 5300? I'm not, I don't have high hopes here. Oh, a lot of two of them. I don't know if you can call that a lot, really. Like, that's kind of generous. You're like, got this huge box uh, filled with two processors. Uh, $9, and it was 12% off. They did a lot of seven. There you go, for $17. OK, getting some value, about $2 each. Uh, a lot of 12 for $14. Uh, not as good value. This is E5300s also. So um, what I'm gathering here is, is unless we have a lot of these and we sell them in a lot of at least two, we're not going to get much for them. <laughs> like I said earlier, uh, these have no real value. I don't know if they even work. We just saw them on the side of the road in Taiwan, bought them. And if you are interested in maybe getting a piece of whatever era history one of these comes from, we're going to throw in these 79 CPUs at random in orders from store.gamersaccess.net today. There's no guarantee you'll get one. It has no value. But it's just going to be a throw in at random uh, for any orders from the store. Um, these mod mats that we're working on today for PC building, wire diagrams, grids for screw tracking, all that stuff. We don't have many of these left, and it will be a few months, I think, till our restock. So you'll want to grab one if you've been wanting one. Uh, also, we've kept the pricing the same on this for like three or four years now, even though my costs have gone up a lot. So uh, definitely appreciate the ongoing support for those. Next one. Let's see. 
And then we're going to lay out four new ones for chat to choose from. Oh, this is a different one. It is a Core 2 Duo. There's a, there were a lot of Core 2 Duos that Intel sold. 6420. I want to see what chat thinks about this uh, so far. Is there a Phenom X6? That would be awesome. Uh, yes, there are a lot of LGA775 chips. And as some of the uh, some of the people who are commenting are saying, you know, these are these look like they were pulled out of like pre-built or office workstations, and that is very likely for many of these. Okay, how's the super chats going? So we got one from Lewis Sayers, one British pound, no message. Thank you, nonetheless. Uh, Carlos Devia says ten dollars says, can I get one signed for you for my display case? I don't think I have a great process for signing and distributing them to specific people. Sorry. Um, that would have been interesting, though. But we, we do uh, signing streams, or at least we have a lot in the past occasionally. So keep an eye out, because uh, we've normally done stuff like mouse mats and mod mats, things like that. Um, but it would be fun to sign some just old hardware and distribute it that way. Tech Max Power, one British pound, no message, thank you. Lewis Sayers, $2, or, oh, there's your uh, message now. It says, you could make them into keychains. I could. Uh, that would be a lot of effort, and uh, I think I'd rather, I'd rather set up some kind of more formal process for that. But I do like the idea, and I think there's something there. But what we'll do instead is distribute them randomly among the orders, and then uh, whoever gets them can make them into keychains, one or the the one that they get. Okay, Doctor Gizmo, ten dollars. Thank you. Says I'm really enjoying this stream so far. Uh oh. Well, we've gotten to your question, so I hope you don't ruin it for yourself. <laughs> Says I just bought the Hourglass T-shirt. I hope I can get one of those CPUs. Maybe you could sign it too, which would be cool. That's two requests for that. Uh, I don't think I'm. I don't think I can do that. It's going to be a lot of because I'll have to clean them all first, and then the signature will probably come off really easily anyway. So, um, Paul Taylor says not purchasing newer stuff and leaving it on a shelf is in itself a form of e-waste from a certain view. Not purchasing and leaving it on a shelf. Uh. I'm very confused by that comment. I don't know if it's just the writing. I think I, I understand where it's trying to go, but if you're saying like it's e-waste, not purchasing it and leaving it on a shelf. No, because someone, someone else who wants to use it will buy it. And all you do if you don't need it and you leave it on a shelf is create artificial demands. So they manufacture more to keep up with the demand that everyone's creating for products they don't want. I don't know if I agree with that comment. Uh, next one. Oh, I got that one. Uh, Keluke, I think, $2, says, what is your favorite pizza topping? I am not answering security questions. How about that? Not as dumb as you think. <laughs> I'm going to start, start using that for my answer to all the security questions. Like, ah, got you, bank. I'm not answering that trick. <laughs> All right. uh, let's do another round of four. OK, chat. Oh, no, we got to mix these up. There's too many Too many that look like they're probably Core 2 Duos. There's a lot of things that look like Core 2 Duos. Do I have any more AMD CPUs? There we go. There's an AMD one. There's an AMD one. There we go. We got two that I think are probably AMD and two that are Intel. Do your worst, chat. Let me do another super chat here. Uh, Gorpan says, what is your opinion on copper pad modding a GPU? How many times do I have to say I'm not answering security questions? That's not a security question. Copper pad modding a GPU. Do you mean like copper shims? Like, um, like when you get a small copper place and you plate and you shim it between like the VRM and the heatsink. Uh, I'm not sure if there's like a, a more modern thing. Copper pad mod GPU. I, 
copper modded a GPU. I'm pretty sure these are what you would traditionally just call copper shims. Copper thermal pad, that's a stretch. <laughs> it's not really a pad. <laughs> it's copper. Um, I'm just looking at Google, not trying to take the piss out of this comment there. Um, I got to look at chat here for these answers. Uh, my opinion on it is it's worked great in the past. You have to be really careful with it, though, because if you get the shim uh, thickness wrong, you can definitely put a lot of strain on the PCB. You could potentially cause bad contact or crack something. Um, we've done it successfully. I haven't done a copper shim mod in probably a couple years now, but you still need at least thermal paste on either side of it. So you know, you're going from one interface, which is a thermal pad, to potentially, well, to definitely three. Maybe two if you don't use it, but you should use paste. So it's not necessarily efficient. Good question, though. They were fun when I did them. I just don't know that they're always worth it. OK. Uh, there's a lot of numbers in chat. 1.5 is not a valid option. You've been disqualified. You're no longer allowed to vote. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone in chat commented and said, I've never seen a pizza-related security question. Well, I guess, uh, I, guess I, I guess the life I live on the internet is just a lot more exciting then. I don't know. I feel like I've seen that one a lot. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What newer games would you like to try? I like that question, but let me get the CPU first. Threes, a lot of threes. Why does everyone like three? Is this like a s social experiment? Oh, because you can't see the pins. OK. I like that. Andrew's got it, I think. Uh, so a lot of people chose three. Was this your number? Oh my god, how does he do it? So this is a very clean CPU. Look at that. That's like, that, that's a beautiful IHS right there. It's been cleaned or was never used. Let's take a closer look. We've even got the pins protected. Watch me pull this off. And they're all just smashed flat. Oh, they look pretty good. There's the pins. I think this is a Sempron. Uh, let's see. Is it in chat said, uh, someone in chat said it's another Athlon X2, to which I say, no, it's a Sempron. Uh, not far off, although at the time you would have been. But now uh, they're about as useful. Let's see, what Sempron is this? Do we have multiple? I think this is a 26, this is a 2600. This is a Sempron 2600 plus. Pretty confident in that. Uh, what was, do we have the MSRP easily accessible? Wow, eighty-five dollars. When did this launch? Sempron. Uh oh, I forgot what I said. Sempron, twenty-six hundred plus. Release date. August two thousand four for the CPU. And the original value, the original MSRP was eighty-five dollars. Inflation calculator. Uh, let's see, two thousand four. And it was 85. For, seriously? $122 today? It's worse than I thought. Uh, so what is it worth now? There's the, that's the real question. So now, AMD Sempron 2600 Plus. Let me get the CPU out there. Anyone wants to take a look at how nice that IHS is in a minute? So most recent sales, got one for $30. Got one for, is this the same one? X130, I don't think so. Another one, 2600 plus. It's like, wait. I'm a, I'm a little, is this a, Laptop one? Is it a 2600? I think so. There's a 2600 non plus for 65. 
60, wait, oh my god, I'm so dumb. I, I see the problem with names now. I thought AMD was inventing new numbers every time they released the CPU. Uh, for example, I'd never heard of 7 before, the new Ryzen 7000 series coming up. And now that that number's been invented, probably NVIDIA will steal it. So, uh, spoiler alert, R5-2600, very different from 2004's Sempron 2600. Don't mix them up. But now that we're on this topic, $65 for a 2600 actually seems pretty good, especially if you already have the entire rest of the AM4 platform. I liked the 2600 when we reviewed it, especially versus the 2600X. Uh, really good cost savings, like $50 cheaper for that letter, and um, great value CPU. That was where the tide started turning to be back and forth between Intel and AMD really heavily. So I, I do like the history of that CPU. Unfortunately, not what we got. <laughs> I was like, $85, what? That looks more accurate to me. Uh, and so does that. That actually looks like the CPU we have. So. Anyway, we're, we're going to forget about the part where I forgot that multiple 2600s exist for a second. It became very obvious as soon as the prices were, were shown. OK. What is chat saying? I mean, we've got some in here that honestly seem like, uh, I think if you did this, as like a side hustle to make some money. And he like randomly picked up a few kilograms of CPUs and then, uh, then wheeled and dealed CPUs at wherever you could, eBay. Uh, it, it seems like you could make a few bucks on it, but it seems like a, a lot of work to do so. So I don't know that that's, I guess depends where your supply comes from. Especially if the seller accidentally mix, mixes in an R5 2600 when they think they're putting a Sempron in there. That'd be the, the best possible outcome. Uh, a couple store orders I'll shout out. So Kevin uh, from Belgium picked up a mod mat. Thank you, Kevin. Picked up a signed one, too. I will have to get out to the warehouse and sign a bunch of these. Thank you for ordering one of those. We're probably very low on mod mats, actually, at this point. We had Andreas from Switzerland pick up a mod mat. It is always awesome to see people all over the world hanging out in the streams. Uh, UK. We got an order from, I'm going to do my best here and apologize in advance. I think it's Parthipan or Parthipan, part, part, I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry. Uh, from the UK, picked up a mod mat, a wireframe mouse mat, and an hourglass silicon sand shirt. The only how to pronounce thing results I'm getting looked like they were all generated as soon as I typed that search phrase in. So I apologize. I, I did try to find the correct pronunciation. Uh, I think I'm going to click on it, and it's going to be, what is the one that's everywhere on YouTube? Emma Says. Have you seen that one for pronunciation? And it's just a robot voice? Yeah. And it's like every word that's ever existed, and half the time the pronunciation is wrong. Uh, next one is from Maxime from Canada, picked up a mod mat as well. Thank you. Okay, let's get over to chat. Oh, you forgot the Atari 2600. Thank you. Yes. That I would have been extremely happy about finding. That's given me an idea, though. Um, I'm going to go grab something that we also bought in our Taiwan trip from the same market. And Andrew will figure out what to show to keep you all entertained. I'll be right back. Uh, I'm going gonna, gonna to mute it just in case I exit the range of the mic because it might send feedback through. So one second. I'm getting something cool. OK, I think I'm unmuted. Can you still hear me? OK, check this out. <clears throat> we bought this at the same market. This is actually 
in my opinion, way cooler than the CPUs. This was from a seller at Guanajuato Digital Plaza in the nicer building. There's two buildings. Oh no, actually, he's in the older of the two buildings, uh, which is actually where a lot of the cooler stuff is. And check it out. We got a, I think he repaired it too. I'm pretty sure that's what his shop does. Hey Steve, what monitor is that? People always ask that in the streams and they ask it so frequently that we actually stuck the monitor name to the front of the monitor, so I can answer it. It's a Gigabyte AD27QD. So uh, this is what we picked up. Andrew, can you are you able to read this? Is this like show how? Uh, so <laughs> he shrugs. Uh, I forget what we paid for this. I know I remember looking it up after and being like, we overpaid, but it was still cool. So I think. Everything works to my understanding. We need to um, probably try and hook this up. Right, I've got a TV now. <laughs> we need to probably try and hook this up uh, in the kitchen or something for some office gaming. But anyway, the good old family computer from Nintendo. Uh, I was thrilled when we saw those there. Famicom. And uh, is it Dragon Warrior? Is that what was on there? I don't know, Dragon Quest IV. Good old Famicom. That was actually really cool. We should, uh, we should do something with that. I think Patrick and I bought it and intended, I'm fairly certain it works. Um, I think our intent was to clean it and do a video on that. And then we were like, the Atari uh, refurbishing video we did, it was like kind of mixed views, not great. So we decided not to, but now that we have GN Extras, that would still be a cool project for that. Let's see. Just put a sticker with the name of the monitor on the back. Well, look at you with your smart solutions to our problems. <laughs> then I wouldn't get engagement. How about that? Uh, <laughs> all right. So what's next? Big Big Spoon 499, thank you. Says, sign the CPUs. I'll take one with my bar mat, please. I'm not going to be signing them. I'm sorry. Um, $10 from Jason says, shirt twinning today. Nice. The hourglass shirt, although I think I'm wearing actually the Disappointment 21 uh, back version of this, but we do have the hourglass front with a new back on the store. Uh, I liked working on this one a lot. Andrew did the, um, the sort of sands of time designed to represent wastes of sand that we kept saying all year in a GPU shroud. I'm sure Nvidia loves it. Uh, <laughs> Next one is from uh, jump to the CPUs after this one, is from Arturo, who said, did you guys ever read my email? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Wait, that doesn't help me find it. Uh, we get a lot of emails. I don't read all of them. Um, I don't know. Uh, I might have to check other inboxes. Next one, or last one before I jump back, is from, I'm gonna go with the uh, Hacko, uh, Pateri, $5, or yeah, Yakko maybe. Uh, no message though. Okay, let's, let's go for the next one. I'm just gonna pick one of these. I think this might be a Core 2 Duo, but let's just see what do we got here. Uh, oh, it's not a Core 2 Duo. Any guesses in chat? I should take a look at the CPU here. So pretty obvious it's Intel. Try and take a guess. I'll give you some options. Uh, Core 2 Duo, <laughs> Core 2 Quad. Uh, what else do we have? Celeron, Pentium. Take a guess. I feel like that was like a, like a Jeopardy question or something. Let's see. What does uh, what does chat think it is? Hard watching all that good gear when so broke. I mean, I'm sorry to inform you. This is not good gear. It was. It's not now. Uh, Okay, what, what are people, okay, see so yeah, a quad core, someone's guessing, you're, 
I see a Xeon guess here. That is uh, very optimistic, I'm going to go with. I would love to have some old server CPUs in this pile. Old server CPUs are really fun to work with. I don't know why. Patrick and I have always really liked building systems where like uh, weird dual socket boards that have repurposed X79 chipsets, like the Juan and Jiu board that we did the review on, actually. I've seen some Celeron, Pentium, Pentium 4, Celeron. OK, let's reveal it. Is that legible to the camera? I think it's a Pentium D. Uh, Pentium D, it says 925. I don't know if we're going to be able to get a good angle on this one, but take my word for it. If not, <laughs> kind of see it. Andrew says can kind of see it. Good enough for me. Uh, someone says I just heard the Pentium jingle. Yeah. Got, I don't know. Is this 05? Nope, oh, 06. Uh, Pentium D. We do have a few of these. Which one? Is this 925? 925, Pentium D. So it was $74 when it launched. I was going to say, where did the CPUs that price go? But I guess we do still have a Pentium about that price today. G7400, I think is the model number. Uh, $74. <laughs> Let's see the Pentium D925. Let's see what we can get for it. Pentium D925. Oh, there we go. A few have sold for four bucks. So there is still no value, uh, mostly because I don't know if it actually works. I have no idea if any of these work. 925, 3 gigahertz. Got another one for a dollar, getting the investment back. Uh, 388 for that one. There might be different bins of these. LGA775 comes back once again. This socket was popular. There is a lot of 775 in here. OK, next one. Got an AMD CPU. Oh, that's a good start. It looks kind of like a um, looks kind of like when you use a seed to randomly generate a map, and then you have like the mini map that gives you a preview of the world it's going to generate. I would do really well with like one of the Rorschach t tests. Like, how do you say that? <laughs> what do you see? Uh, it looks kind of like the like Command and Conquer map generation seed. <laughs> This man is troubled. I don't know what any of that means, <laughs> speaking in tongues. <laughs> Athlon 2. Uh, let's look up this one. Ouch. One of the chat, deep fried lettuce in chat said, still higher returns than Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, has he had a good CPU yet? I think so. I mean, not today, but. The um, 4400 plus was pretty cool. We had one of those, and then we had one that I think was not quite a 4400 plus. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. What did I say this is? This is a Athlon 2 AD, ADX620. Athlon 2 X4620. Go figure, that's the name. $99 when it launched. Launched in quarter four of 2009. And uh, it is a quad core CPU. This might be the only quad core we've encountered so far. Nice. Uh, let's see. This is a chip harvest from Deneb Phenom 2 with L3 cache disabled. OK, cool. So based on Patrick's quick notes here from when he looked at this two years ago, uh, before we kind of abandoned the content, and it's here now. The notes from him just say, um, he said, uh, I think he's quoting a review or something. He said, quote, chip harvest from uh, Phenom 2 with L3 cache disabled. So as many of you likely know, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they can bin down or bin side bin CPUs or GPUs when part of it uh, in the silicon is non-functional or not up to par. So you don't get a full rejected piece of silicon from 
the uh, the die cutting process. So you're improving your yields, sort of. You're not getting the yield of the chip you wanted, but in this case, they were turning off L3 cache, either because they were, as this says, harvesting the chip, so they're taking something that is somewhat broken and reusing it, and creating a new SKU entirely around the defect, which actually works great for everybody, because it reduces the actual waste that just gets thrown out. Uh, it can improve the value for consumers, and then the company obviously can sort of better subsidize their other products. Or they can completely abuse it and rip everybody off. It depends on the market conditions, but it's been great in the past. So uh, this is a quad core. Nice. Let's look it up. Athlon 2X4620. This is the best one I think we've run into. 2X4620. There's probably multiple steppings of these, and I'm not going to go. <laughs> I'm not going to go that far. Uh. <laughs> Got the uh, six. Sense. Nice. There's one for ten dollars. Uh, Thirty-one percent off. There's one for ten. There's one for six dollars. I should be looking closer at these names, but that is not the same thing. I reviewed that one. That's that's new. It well, not really, but relative to these, it is much. It's about a decade newer. So, okay. What was that one? Three dollars now. 760K did not retain that much value. A lot of people excited about some of these AMD chips. Uh, 1800 plus was great at that time. Okay, cool. Let's do a couple super chats and do the next one. Uh, 1999 from one super chatter named Jimmy Thickus, T H I C C U S says, currently using a 2009 12-core Mac Pro as an Unraid server, nice, with three server-grade six terabyte drives that are mounted using, I see why the super chat has come in now, that are mounted using tape because the screw holes don't line up, and uh, one parity drive. It was a chore, but I managed. I mean, I'm not gonna make fun of you for that because uh, that is also how I deal with computer problems when I don't want to like swap the whole system. And the hard drives in one of my computers right now are stacked on the floor of the case. I think because I didn't want to put screws in. So it's not even that the holes didn't line up, it's that I didn't want to use screws for the drives. So they're all just sitting on the bottom and when one of them spins up, it's probably bad for the other ones. But uh, I'll fix it later. <laughs> I think it's been like that for eight or nine years now, and it's been fine, so we're all right. Uh, Alpha Beta says, how do I read this in the least, the least Rick Roll way possible? Alpha Beta sent 499 and said, we are no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. Got Rick Astley in the chat. Uh, Bart Simpson. Wow, we got a lot of famous people in the chat today. Uh, Bart Simpson sent $5 and said, Love you, Steve. You rekindled my love of computers after 20 years away. It's awesome to hear when people either get into computers because of YouTube videos or get back into it. So I mean, that's great to hear. Um, 20 years away, quite a bit has changed in some regard, but not much in others. I mean, it's still. The actual assembly process is probably pretty familiar, but then a lot, I mean, cases 20 years ago versus now, the cable management wasn't even like a, a thing on the marketing checklist yet. So quite a, a big change there. Okay, uh, next one is from H, sent New Zealand $5, thank you. I'm about to custom glass loop, nice, a red Harbinger case. Uh, cross desk in New Zealand. Uh, wish you could ensure I don't stuff it up. Good morning from New Zealand. Well, good morning. Custom glass loop uh, building I have not done. I've seen some really cool stuff though where, I forget the name of the company. It's a small company. Uh, they've tweeted at us in the past and it was about, I think it was like 
basically non-mass produced blown glass tubes with really cool like uh, spiral loops and cool reservoirs and things like that where it's like if you have the money to pay for it and it's not I mean it's expensive but in terms of what you're paying for it's labor so that stuff looked really cool um, I have not personally built a custom gl actual glass loop and uh, I guess for H in New Zealand if you when you finish that loop tweet a photo of it to us because I'd love to see it uh, let's see Alexander Schlickenmeyer who earlier tried to trip me up on the pronunciation of his name, sent $5 and said, holy crap, yes, you're right. One of only a few to get it right the first time. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've seen the word Alexander before. Uh, Olin, Olin, Olin X, random question. I know a while ago you swore off single-use plastics. Uh, my mouse pad was in single-use plastic. Was there a restriction there? So I didn't like swear them off completely, it depends. We worked really hard to get rid of them for the uh, mouse mats, not the mouse, the mouse pads are a different story I'll get back to. Mouse mats, so these are just rolled in the uh, unprinted cardboard box, which I don't have immediately accessible, that's fine though. And um, so we don't even print on those boxes, it's just kind of a waste of ink in my opinion, it recycles better if it's barren. Uh, we got rid of them for that, we got rid of them for the coasters. So these, we saved a ton of plastic because the factory wanted to individually wrap every coaster, and there's four in a pack. Massive waste, and we worked with them to get them protected in a form-fitting small box, cardboard box, no custom printing on it really, and um, still protect them with a, uh, a paper wrap instead that's recyclable. As for the mouse pads, so some things we still have to use plastic, and normally it's the things where, depending on how they're shipped to us, we don't have many options for keeping like a bunch of, I mean, just shipping crap off of the product. So um, bar mats are a good example where bar mats we still have to, because they're big uh, and they're like um, a soft PVC, they sort of attract dust, especially cardboard dust. So for that type of product where it attracts a bunch of dust and it's just, it gets gross if you don't wrap it, that's where we had to use them. But uh, we've been working on eliminating them for almost everything, toolkits for example where we have these drivers that used to be individually uh, wrapped in the first one or two production runs, I think. I've talked about this before. This is a, I'm not trying to do like a store pitch, just some insight. Um, so the factories, in our experience, when we've said we don't want to use plastic to wrap it, they are extremely resistant to it because everybody else in the factory uses plastic, so they've got processes for it. So I can respect it from that angle, but it's also like, that's so much waste if you can do it without. So for these, we actually changed the way we had, originally they were using plastic on the handle to protect it because we had printed on the handle originally. And if we shipped without plastic, uh, the problem was sometimes they would put the handle, um, we caught all this in QC, but they would put the handle into the tool bag while it was still drying. And so the plastic would help prevent sort of the ink getting on other things. We end up remolding the mold completely and uh, basically carving it instead. So it costs more, uh, but it's a way better solution. We got rid of 10 single-use plastics per toolkit. So anyway, yes, uh, I've been trying hard to get rid of them and basically everything, but then I've also come to learn that uh, there's some things where it's like, well, yeah, you're, you're kind of you risk ruining the product or pissing off the people buying it if it's certain things that just attract a ton of dust or whatever. Anyway, that's the story for that uh, sidebar though. So next one, Malcolm says, socket 744 or 932 high-end expensive unused M. Uh, socket 744, is this a question? Are you asking me which one? or 932, high-end expensive on used M. Uh, I hate it when I don't understand the question. I don't know if it's even a question. There's no question mark. I'm sorry, I tried. <laughs> Single serving friend SSF, more downhill content when PSU nailed the name. Okay, good, I hope I said it right the second time. I don't know, I, I'm trying to go do some downhill mountain biking later this summer, so maybe after that, that'll be on the side channel if I do it. Uh, all right, I think we already did this one, unless I have multiple that look like the uh, map generation seed. Last one for this pile, we're gonna speed this up too. 
and probably not go through all of them. We'll see, I think there's a lot of Pentiums here. This one is a Core 2 Duo, and it is a, a oh, it's a different one. It's an E6750. So, Core 2 Duo to Duo E6750, is that what I said? Recently sold SLA9V, is that what this is? Yes. This is the same exact one I just opened. Uh, sold as recently as about 14 days ago. Wow. Socket 775, still killing it out there, I guess. Uh, $11. And free shipping. Whew. That's not good value. That is like you throw it in the envelope and hope it gets there. And if it doesn't, you just refund them. Uh, Intel Core 2 Duo E6750, $6. A lot of four, $13. Okay, it's getting worse. I'm going to stop looking. If I don't inform myself, the problem doesn't exist. <laughs> Let's see. What? I don't understand how Super Chat stickers work yet. They're kind of, YouTube does weird stuff. Uh, it's like opening Pokemon cards. Is it? <laughs> I feel like there's a much higher chance for value. <laughs> well, the same chance for nostalgia, though, sort of. Uh, OK. Let's see. I got that question already. The Revolution Cafe. Hopefully, there's a Pentium G3258 in the pile. I don't think so, but that was an awesome CPU. It's the only Pentium that is unlocked for the 20-year anniversary of Pentiums now more than 20 years. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, this super chat, great point. So the G3258, if you weren't around for it, that was so cool. I forgot the core and, and the core count and the frequency. I want to say two cores. I don't know. Um, let's see. Pentium G3258. What was, I remember it was a really interesting part because it was unlocked. Two core, two thread, 3.2 gigahertz stock. And, um, this, I think, was when Scott Wasson was still working at Tech Report, still running Tech Report, because I remember, I'm pretty sure I remember his review of it. Uh, but that CPU is cool because it was very cheap. It was, oh, what was the MSRP? Like, I want to say I frequently saw it for like $50 or something, maybe $70, I don't remember. And uh, you could overclock it. It was basically like the cheapest entry to a gaming PC build. Wasn't going to last you very long with two cores, two threads. But um, great entry point and fun to work with. I do remember that CPU. It is for sure not in this pile. <laughs> Techie Ben, thank you, Steve, for the great work, positive goals, and kindness to cats in the local community. No problem. Thank you for uh, reminding me. I got to get back in touch with Cat Angels and we do something with them soon. Uh, Dra uh, James Transom 617 says, Hi, Steve. Did you get a lot of good applications to your job postings? Hope so. Your company and team are the standard. Thank you. We had a lot of great applications. I went through them, almost all of them, uh, up until the end where we had sort of made a decision at that point and then closed the, the um, opening. But uh, yeah, a lot of good applications. It took a very long time to go through them all and work with people and sort of figure out where the best fit was. But we have already filled that position. And uh, you all should know more soon, I'm sure. Uh, Alpha Beta. So, oh no. Alphabet is the same one who did the Rick Astley thing earlier. It's going to happen again. Uh, never. Why are you laughing? Andrew's laughing. Never going to give you up. We're going to lose so many viewers if I read the rest of this. Never going to let you down. I'm not going to read the rest of this. Someone's going to. I've already given you enough. You can use AI to make the whole song with my voice now. Uh, Kinsey, would you use i3-12100 over 10-100 for office work? Great question. Um, I don't think so. For office work, 10-100 is perfectly fine. The 12-100 will age better. And depending on how good you are about closing software you're not actively using, the 12-100 would handle that better too. But I think 10-100 is perfectly fine for um, for, for office work, depending on what that means to you. 
Got a super chat sticker in from, uh, man, this is why super chat stickers, they don't tell me the, the name. From Erican Alp dot dot dot. If YouTube doesn't tell me the rest of the name, I can't do much. Uh, sent in a jumping dog with fireworks. Super chat sticker, thank you. Okay, <laughs> let's do a bunch of these at once. So I am going to, Let's let's do the let's do the identify core two duos game. It'll be easy for the ones that have core two duo written on them. Is this a core two duo? No, this is a Penny MD. And he wrote two hundred dollars on it. I don't. That's promising. Well, that maybe that was the. I don't know. We'll see what that means in a minute. Is this a Penny M? No, this is a Celeron. Okay. E. This is a Celeron. That's probably a Celeron. He wrote 200 on that one, too. Why? E2140. E2140. Maybe that was the MSRP. Sold for, at some point, $9 in May. That's a, now that is a good-looking Dell computer right there. I don't think... Wow. You know, say what you will about Dell, but they've certainly committed to a certain design because that doesn't look much different than today. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, anyway, the $200 written on it was, was uh, not accurate for today. Maybe at one point, not now. Okay. Let's go through. So we got a 2140. We have an E2100. Here's what we're going to do, chat. I want to read a bunch of these names as I go through them. And I'm going to check chat in a minute or so. And uh, if one of these names jumps out at you as really interesting, spam the name in chat. And then I'll, I'll do some more looking at that one for, for help me pick the content, basically. All right, let's see. Got some QC stickers on these. This is an E6500. This is a Pentium, I think that says G840, pretty sure. Help me out, chat, with which one to look at. E1200. This is an E5500. Is there any AMD stuff to balance this? There's some AMD stuff. This is an Athlon 64X2, and it looks like it's a 4000 series Athlon. I can't read that one. Ooh, that one looks maybe interesting. There you go. Some pins on that. So we got PGA. It looks relatively protected, actually. And this is an Intel CPU. So it's PGA Intel Celeron 1.7 gigahertz. That one might be interesting. I'm going to set that aside. Uh, in chat, you can just call it PGA Celeron if you want to see more about that one. Okay. Does this have pins? This does have pins. All right, we're getting into some kind of cool ones here. Let's see. This one has got a really scratched up IHS. This is an Intel PGA Pentium, and it's Pentium 4, 2.8 gigahertz part. Let's take a look at that one. That's kind of cool. I think we have another. I'm oh, just kidding. This one I picked up is not interesting at all. <laughs> all right, let me see what chat's saying, if any of these interest you all. Let's see. Uh, hey, my first real gaming computer came with a Core 2 Duo E6300, says Mirage Dive. I don't remember what my first... Uh, gaming system, the pre-built I had was, uh, it was either a Northgate or an E-Machine. Uh, Pentium D945 is the oldest CPU I had. E6500 is the most interesting so far, someone says. Um, let's see, PGA Celeron. There's, some, there's a lot of interest in the PGA Celeron. Was that this one or the other? It's the Pentium. PGA Celeron, okay, let's look up, let's look up that one. So this is, sorry, I'm moving the camera everywhere. This is a 
Celeron. That's the model number. Is it C09 or something? It's kind of hard to read some of these after they've been under a, an oxidizing heat sink for like 20 years. Uh, SL69Z, I think is the code. SL69Z. So this one released in quarter one of 2002, the CPU that we got for a, a dollar. The MSRP is uh, listed as not applicable, so I don't think Patrick was able to quickly find it in his pre-show notes. And uh, if you know in chat what this sold for, let us know, or maybe it was just in OEM only, and that's why it's not applicable. So it's a Intel Celeron product code SL69Z. Model is presently unknown. They've written on it 1.7 gigahertz slash 128. So I'm guessing that's cache. Uh, is that one point? I can't read the voltage. One point something five. And the price of this one SL69Z. Intel Celeron SL69Z. This reminds me of how this is a long time ago. One time someone from Intel emailed me and was like, do you have, I forget what the CPU was, do you have XYZ CPU? And I was like, I, I think so, oh, why? And he was like, we need one, we don't have one in the lab. Like, oh, I guess you can borrow it. I don't know, it's kind of, you just like make another one? <laughs> like, you know, run one off in the 65 nanometer fab? Uh, all right. So I'm not really seeing much here. Was it just, is it a socketable mobile CPU or are these just similar names? We've got a, an MSI motherboard, I think with the CPU for $40 is the closest I'm seeing. Kind of interesting one now, okay, cool. Uh, it looks like, oh, Patrick was able to find one previously. So in 2020, Patrick found one of these on eBay for $3. I don't know if that was the sold price, and I was very hopeful, <laughs> or if that was the actual sale price. Is the Microsoft keyboard choice, this is from uh, CHR0, choice or chance? I've used that model for 15 years. It's seen me through most many games. Almost time for its retirement. Thanks for everything. Uh, it's choice, honestly. Like, this keyboard's ancient. I used it for, like you said, for gaming. Uh, I thought it was a nice keyboard. That was sort of before I discovered stuff like the Logitech G series, G11, G15, whatever. And um, I like it for streaming, even though it's not a particularly good keyboard because uh, membrane stuff is just, it doesn't create as much noise. So for streaming, it doesn't pick up as much on the mic if I have to type a bunch for something. So it is choice. All right, let's do a few super chats to break up some of the CPU opening for a minute. Uh, I think I might have to, I might have to cut the super chats at some point and stop reading. Uh, like we'll read all the ones that are here now, but I'm not gonna be able to take more at some point soon. Um, let's let's see. We left off at the uh, Rick Roll comment. Uh, next one, Martin Parker. I'm gonna go through a bunch of these as fast as I can. Mark Parker, 20, GBP, thank you. Hey, how old of a CPU do you think you can s use and still get Windows 11? Why would you want that? And a 3090 Ti stable. I don't think I've ever seen a big YouTuber cover this. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, by stable, I guess the only instability would be Windows 11 itself, not liking your hardware. I'm sure they have minimum requirements. Uh, to be honest, it's not something I've thought about just because I don't really want to use Windows 11 right now. Next one is from Adam Lynn. Uh, let's see. Hi, Steve. Patiently waiting for chances to buy signed merch. Got a desk pad and mouse mat signed by yourself and Tech Odin. That's Joe Staponzi doing the overclocking streams with us. Uh, P.S. Can you say hi to, I think this is just pronounced Piddlefish. Hello. Um, so, yes, Tech Odin, I need to get back out here. Uh, we, we will do definitely some more 
signing streams at some point in the future now that we've got the setup working again. And I don't think we've really dropped frames. OBS has zero frames dropped. Uh, I will elect to believe OBS because I want that to be true. And it hasn't always been true. Don't touch my food. Five dollars. OK. All right. All right. Uh, review the Razer power supply. It's in all caps. Review the Razer power supply fans and AIO. We need to see how laughable. They have a power supply? Is it in a pre-built? Razer power supply. Oh. Is it the USB-C charger? Oh, Razer Katana. Why are they? I, OK. Razer Katana. Is it new? Razer Katana PSU. That's not new, is it? Oh, maybe it is new. <laughs> OK, we had articles apparently about its release in 2021 coming out with someone in April asking if it's still happening. Do people care that much about Razer power supplies? That you're like, actually, wow, OK. I'm just surprised someone would be like, is it like I'm surprised someone remembered it? It was announced in October, and they were asking in April if it's coming out. Uh, Razer Katana Chroma, powerfully colorful. What does that mean? <laughs> Power. Does, is this? Are we? Am I a real streamer now? I'm reacting to things live. I've made it. This is the end game. <laughs> uh, Power your PC with the performance and style it deserves. Meet the Razer Katana, an ultra-efficient platinum rated or better. What? There's only one that's better. Why wouldn't she just, is, is it like we, we can hit titanium on half a percent of the units, so we can't call it titanium, but we can say or better. Like, just commit to your marketing language. It, it sounds fine when you say platinum rated. It sounds like a stretch when you say, or it sounds uncertain when you're like, or better. We don't know. We didn't test it. Uh, power supply designed to support the ultimate CPUs and GPUs in your PC. Includes addressable RGB. Uh, OK. Premium power efficiency. Get the clean power output you need to build the best gaming PC with the latest GPUs so you can run your favorite games the way they're meant to be experienced. Not the way they're meant to be played, because then we would be sued by NVIDIA, but the way they're meant to be experienced. Platinum rated. Yes, you've told me that. Where's the or better this time? Platinum rated or better. Uh, designed to maximize highest efficiency uh, electrical performance, OK. Reducing heat and energy use, yes, great. Uh, thank you. Then we can reallocate it to the RGB LEDs instead. Modular by design. I would hope it's by design. A uh, silent, powerful ARGB fan powered by Razer Chroma. Um, I would love to sit in the marketing meetings. I think this happened because they were like, the other ones are two lines, and this one's only one. It looks weird. How do we make it two lines? And uh, saying that it was modular by not accident sounded weird, so they went with by design. <sighs> Comes with the cables you need to support the power requirements your system requires. Let me um, just uh, let me just read that one again. The Razer Katana power supply comes with the cables you need to support to support the power requirements your system requires. Do I really need to review this? Like, have we done enough? I think we've done enough. Stone's going to come out and be like, hey, uh, so I have this power supply. That chat was interested in you testing and reviewing. Here's the marketing language. What do you think? And he's going to be like, Do we need to review this? Uh, OK. All right. Well, I've certainly I've been convinced. I'm glad it comes with cables. That's good. Um, 
And I'm, I'm also glad that it supports the requirements that I require. Wow, all right, how's chat reacting to this one? Fully modular would have worked for the two lines. Yes, excellent point uh, from Listenbird. Uh, let's see. What's chat saying about this one? <laughs> oh, there you go. You were actually saying something instead of leaving the room for 15 minutes, not a real React streamer. <laughs> Is that what it takes? I can do that too. All right. I want to be a real streamer. Uh oh. I locked the door. I wasn't sure if I had my key. Then I'd be a real streamer. Uh, what's Chad saying about the Razor one? I need to read some of these. When it explodes or sparks RGB. RGB makes your computer faster. That is well known. Who wants a disco power supply? Uh, it exists only on paper and will reach something between platinum and titanium if it doesn't blow up. Okay, that's... Uh, oh, I like this one. You can play your games the way they're meant to be experienced or better. Strongest marketing language I've ever heard. That's, uh, you're like, you, you're... Boss tells you you need to hit a certain word count, and you start repeating the word requirements three times in one sentence. <laughs> Let's see. OK, I think <laughs> people are really mean to the razor. <laughs> Some of these I can't read. It's got the cables your computer craves. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for some. I've heard you have requirements, so we put requirements in your requirements so you can require while you require. I'm pretty much. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that's how that's how the marketing meeting went. Okay. Well, anyway, who brought that one up? I have to thank them. It was a super chat. Uh, Razor. Don't touch my food is the one who brought that up. Thank you. Don't touch my food for making me aware of the Razor power supply. I didn't know that existed. Um, OK, let's do a couple CPUs. Are there any interesting ones left in this pile? This one's open. That's a Celeron G540. So we got a Celeron representing there. This is a Pentium dual core E5200. This one looks interesting. It's got an AMD socket protector, and I think it's an... In oh, wow. Oh, this is actually super interesting. I like this one. This is cool. So this is some engineering. Uh, this has engineering history. Let me figure out what it is, and then I'll, I'll show you why it's cool. It is Intel Confidential. All right. So it's an engineering sample. If they ask me for it back, I'll say I don't know where it went. Uh, actually, that'll be true. It'll go to someone who bought something out of the store. QMT OES, I think, is the model number here. So here's why this one's cool. Check this out. Uh, let me get OBS open so I can actually see the shot. Okay. Look at the service of that IHS. So that's not a mistake. That's not like a gouge mark. This is actually intentional. I want to put this down over here. Um, so that mark, if I point something out to you, uh, where's the lighting good? Ooh, that's pretty good. So what you're looking at here is, um, I don't know how they made this particular one, but for cooler testing, one of the best ways you could really do a test is get what you might refer to as an accept and a reject temperature. and um, you would mill a hole into the surface of the CPU IHS as shallow as you can, embed a thermocouple wire into it. So you can actually still see some paste in there in that milled hole. So this is nickel-plated copper. That's why you see the copper exposed in there. And 
uh, once you embed a really thin wire, you um, can, don't have to, but you can do the same on the other side, on the, this is why you call it accept and reject, on the cold plate for the cooler that's contacting it. And uh, it would allow you to do some very, at the time, advanced, um, and actually now it's pretty standard too, thermal testing for things like thermal interfaces. You could also do this for testing the CPU T case. You could do this if it was before a time when software would expose the CPU die temperature to you, so you couldn't rely on something non-destructive. You would have to do a little bit of destruction to get that temperature and know that you're running at an okay uh, spot thermally. And you could also use it for testing CPU coolers. If you wanted to see what is the T case or the temperature of the IHS, the case, while you're running a heat load with different coolers on it. So that is actually super cool. We'll send this out in one of the orders randomly as well, even though I actually really like it, um, but we'll, we'll send it out there. And uh, this is something I wanted to do in the past, but we normally found better methods and still really useful way though to just trust your measurements you're getting. So that has some cool history to it. It's an engineering CPU. It's probably in a test lab somewhere previously. Or is there questions about thermocouples? Did someone, I see a lot of people saying the word thermocouple and I'm not sure why. <laughs> I don't know if there's a question about what that is or, uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out why a bunch of people said the word thermocouple. Okay, I'm not sure. More scratches on that CPU than my car's body work. It is pretty scratched up. Definitely was in an engineering lab. Uh, I don't know if there was a question about thermocouples, but just to, just that turned out weirdly educational for just one dollar. One of the chat users said yes, yes, it did. I like that. Um, just in case someone, uh, um, I don't know if there was a question about thermocouples. It's a, it's a really normally thin wire. You can do larger ones. I don't see any near me for our XOC stuff. But, um, nope, those are the AMD bike pedals. <laughs> I don't see any thermocouples in here. Um, yeah, it's just a, a thin wire and has a probe on the end of it. Um, you can use it for as simple as oh, water temperature, air temperature, attach it to something. That's how we test MOSFET temperatures a lot of the time. Now more people are saying thermocouple. I am proud of chat though, they're spelling it right. They're not saying thermal couple, they're saying thermocouple. So excellent job, thank you. <laughs> you made me proud chat. Uh, let's get some more, I'm gonna go through some more super chats and then we'll look and see if there's any more really cool CPUs like that one. Oh, there you go. The Revolution Cafe says, are you ready, Andrew? Let's talk about that gold cat in the background. What is there to talk about? I don't know what... Andrew, do you know what they're referring to? No. We're not really sure what you're talking about. Sorry, I tried. Um, huh. Well, maybe next time. Uh, John, $10, says, I hope I get an Athlon 4X2. I did a sweet build with one of those years ago for a friend. It will go, with my co go well with my coasters. We've definitely seen a few of them. I think there is an extremely high uh, distribution of Core 2 Duos in this pile. Uh, and uh, then maybe some Pentium Ds. James Yun said, it seems, let's see, I need to catch up on chats for sure. So let me run through a bunch of these really quick. It seems you bought a bunch of CPUs from 2008 or so. Uh, some of them go back to like 02, 01. Uh, Coladict says, still designing a PC case, question mark, could you make it one with removable, removable optical drive slot? No, we made a video a while ago, uh, it was an Ask GN, if you want to just search the channel for Ask GN, where we talked about why we decided not to make a computer case, at least right now. Next one, uh, ch chat is still saying stuff about thermal, <laughs> there's like, they're just spelling thermal, thermocouple really poorly now. <laughs> we were, I thought, I thought we were cool. Uh, what was the one I just answered? Let's 
Super Chat needs to not scroll. Oh, there was a gold cat one that I could search for that, yes. Okay, cool, thank you. Let's see. Cameron Cash, it says, could you make a video on the 3400 watt power supply Linus got his hands on? Uh, I don't think, I'm not really that interested in that one. We've done enough power supplies that explode or are, are like dumb wattages, so I think we're good there right now. So are you going to liquid nitrogen overclock the oldest chip? Uh, I don't think so. I'll probably just get Joe up here and we'll overclock something new. Let's see. Um, Zell Nanashi says, have everyone on the team sign a few each? I can't do that this time. Can do some kind of charity auction for a random signed CPU. Someone will want to collect them all. No, but we will do, uh, we've done charity auctions of cool like team signed things before, either through our own eBay page or through Cramden Institute, which does e-waste processing, recycling, tech education, stuff like that. So uh, keep an eye on the news videos. I normally announce that kind of stuff then. Um, next one says, look out for Xeons to use on 775 and 2771 mod. I don't think we're going to see a Xeon, but I will keep an eye out. I, I liked, uh, like I said, I like old uh, server hardware. Um, Yako Pateri, any Pentium, or sorry, any Phenom, Four X four nine sixty T's so far with unlockable cores. None so far. K uh, five dollars. Thank you. Says, what are your thoughts on uh, the super chat? Says, what are your thoughts on cheese and ketchup sandwiches? You know, I already said I'm not answering security questions today. I don't know why you keep asking me security questions. Andrew, do you have any thoughts on cheese and ketchup sandwiches? <laughs> there is, uh, there are cheese slices and there's ketchup in the kitchen. I mean, I'm going to be hungry after the stream, so. <laughs> it's, it's you or me. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is from Bloonface. Said, love the channel, the content. LGR collab with the sealed Pentium Pro when? That might be fun. I haven't thought about like using it for something. I like being a sealed box, though. I don't know. Um, Pete C, thanks for the recent retro gaming machine video. I picked up a cheap 10400 and MSI Z490A yesterday. It's way better than my old third gen H81. Yeah. Uh, so the video that Pete C is referring to is the 10100. I think, is it the 10100 video? I don't know if I'd call that retro. Maybe there's a different video that we did. We had to have done something else. That's not retro, but uh, anyway, we did a 10100 video and it's a good CPU for the, 10100, 10100. Good CPU for the price right now. Uh, Kaluk says, okay, then what is not your favorite pizza topping? Uh, bicycles. Inderjeet Singh says, Hey Steve, did you get my letter and a partially delitted 2600K IHS with some of the CPUs still attached from a couple of years ago? Yeah, uh, we got, we did that fan mail thing to a PO box a couple of years ago at the old office. I'm not sure specifically if yours was the one I'm thinking of, we did get delitted 2600Ks. Um, we got a couple that had been delitted and then relitted stuff. I don't think any of them were liquid metal. I don't know if that was really a thing at that time, but um, yes, we got a lot of those. I don't know, not specifically 2600Ks, but a lot of delitted CPUs. Some 8600Ks in there too. Uh, next one. Actually, on that note, I wanted to do a project at some point. Oh, maybe we'll film it. Of um, putting some of the, the like viewer letters and fan mail and stuff like that um, in the hallway on the wall at some point. I think that would be cool. Ben Grogan, what thickness do thermal pads become more uh, viable than a thick thermal interface blob? <laughs> Good question. Um, I mean, I think once you're at like 0.5 millimeters, you're probably wanting to use something more rigid than, uh, than thermal paste. You could use thermal putty. Uh, EVGA likes using that. That works really well. And 
it's good up until maybe about a, a millimeter, and then it starts to, it, it doesn't really hold shape that well. But I'd say half a millimeter, if, if not smaller. Martin Parker, are Gigabyte products like lit candles? Am I safe to buy the ones I watch while in use? Am I safe to buy the ones? You mean like, um, like the stuff, the Gigabyte products we're using? Uh, I, I can't explicitly speak to the safety of any of their products, but um, the only ones we've really had blow up from Gigabyte have been those specific two models of power supply. So, I mean, generally speaking, components that actually blow up or catch fire are pretty rare. Far more common than I feel comfortable with the last few years, but still overall rare. Uh, Pop of Tater says, thank you for the channel and all you do. Thank you for supporting us. We're making good progress here on the Super Chats. Uh, let's see, there was the Super Chat sticker from Eric and Alp. Electricity machine, $5. Hi, Steve. Love GN and the work you guys do. I was wondering, is there a 7980XE in that pile? I hope, I hope that's a reference to like the first meme that was ever on this channel. Uh, it was the first live stream meme we ever had. People kept asking me what CPU I was overclocking, and I got sick of answering 7980XE, and then every stream after that, apparently until now, has had references to it. So I've learned my lesson. Uh, and no, I don't think there will be one. The great, uh, I can't read, like, uh, Jibo I'm going to go with? Kwai? Uh, anyway, sent, sent 666, thank you. Said, hi, chat. Back to you, Steve. Uh, let's see, got a couple Super Chat stickers. Astronomical Potato. I was about to read that in a really stupid way because there's a space between the letters. Uh, will you be up all night till the sun, all night to get lucky? Why, why is that one the meme song? <laughs> we went, we went, went from Rick Rolling to is it Daft Punk? Daft Punk and Pharrell. And Pharrell, yeah. Yeah, I only use his first name. We're good friends. <laughs> Scott Snyder, I have a G3258 and Gigabyte Z97M. We'll send to your PO box if you want to LN2 it to death. I don't think I do. Um, the problem with the stuff that's been out for a few years is my memory or my skill with overclock it or working on it fades rapidly because we work on so much stuff. So it starts to take a couple days of prep work just to do anything even meaningful. Uh, next one, FBYGY. Love what you guys do for PC building community. I wish I found you guys before, uh-oh, getting a Dell pre-built, but a few hundred and some, ad <laughs> and some adapters later, and it does what I need at least. That's uh, stunning praise for Dell. CHR0, $5 is, oh, I got that one. Uh, Wubsy says, I find it so great you support Cramden. We need more like them. Yes, there are probably great e-waste recyclers and PC refurbishers near you. The refurbishing part's important because uh, that's where they take something that is otherwise still pretty good and just fix it. Like replace a RAM stick, replace a CMOS battery, stuff like that. Okay, why does YouTube suddenly say no data, but the stream is still going? Everything looks fine. Oh, it doesn't say no data anymore. And we have zero dropped frames. Great interface. Uh, Mr. Rain says, says, my dad saw the stream and asked me if you're that guy who takes computers apart. I said yes, and he said he recognizes you. Imagine that. He's 53, by the way. I mean, computer building is a, uh, is a pretty, I think, widespread hobby at this point, too. So that's cool. Um, Haddix, $10. Review the cables. Oh, the Razor ones. We're almost through these Super Chats, by the way, so then we can move on. I, I <laughs> review, why is this still on the screen? <laughs> this needs to, we need to not promote Razors. We need to not encourage them. I kind of. 
kind of want to learn more, though. Uh, discover which lighting effect suits you best. OK. This is a lot of work. Some developer worked really hard on this. Oh my gosh. Wow. Imagine if Razer had them work on their software suite instead of this. It might work. <laughs> OK. <laughs> anyway, back to this. Uh, M3RK Viper, no message, $1. Thank you. John Hall says, Spending the afternoon waiting for my main gear build to come in, hoping it's going to be great. Glad I caught your review of it and went with them over NZXT. I haven't looked at NZXT in a little while. I probably should. Um, I'd be curious what chat. I'll just look at normal chat with cat. Uh, cat. <sighs> the message I saw immediately when I looked at chat said cat origin story, and then I called chat cat. Uh, I would be curious what chat thinks about uh, NZXE BLD if you have experience with them recently. It's been a while. Um, OK. Uh, yes, yeah, so the main gear build, the one we reviewed, was pretty good. And do we have another one? No. We didn't buy another one of those yet. But we do have a $6,600 pre-built that I bought. It's the most money I've ever spent, I think, on a review component ever. And I bought it because it's fully custom water-cooled. And uh, I'm very curious to see how it shipped on a pallet. So they did a good job there. A um, little bit of a nightmare if you were to ship it to residential, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, that'll be a fun one to look at. It's not main gear, though. Let's read the last of these Super Chats. I'm going to cut off the Super Chats here. I will not be reading any more after the ones that are currently in right now. And then we're going to start working. Oh, I'll get that one. I'm not making any more exceptions. <laughs> then I'll start working through the, a couple more CPUs, and we'll, we'll close it out. Uh, Camaro85 says, the new intro outro you have at your videos where the GN logo turns around. I love this mesh pattern, black and dark blue. I want to see that on a t-shirt, please. And more new shirt designs, please. We can definitely work on more new shirt designs. Um, the logo is. Super cool. We have like uh, transition animations as well for between certain shots. Um, Andrew's worked on some cool templating for things like chart highlights and highlighting other things in the video. So uh, yes, thank you. Uh, Mark Viper says, messed up the last one. People started saving thermocouple because you asked a question and they thought the answer was thermocouple. Oh, OK. I don't remember what I asked, but at least now I know the answer. Uh, Zalcada says, any plans for doing any local events? Not currently. Um, you're going to see one in a video, but it was a, something we did sort of as a one-off with no notice, but um, not currently, although I, I would like to do some more. CC said, ice cube in the radiator, please. CC's been around in the Super Chats and in the streams in general for a while now, and also remembers some of the oldest memes. That one was... that. Ice Cube and Radiator originated from the house when we were, uh, I think it was the RIP LTT stream. I needed the CPU to be, or the GPU, to be a couple degrees cooler. And chat started recommending putting an Ice Cube in the reservoir, which given the thermal mass of a gallon of water, I'm not sure what's going to help. Uh, silly Sailor. You should do a build with one of these. I miss seeing a Sound Blaster card in a build. We actually, why did we get one of those? We got one of those recently. Someone sent it to us in the industry, I think. I don't know. I think they just sent it to us for like a wall prop. Uh, the Suspect, last few here. Are you going to do a follow up on the Artesian debacle? I want to. I have a lot of really cool information. Um, it's just a matter of taking the time to piece it all together. I'll try that uh, on one of the weekends where I have some time. Dennis, still using a Pentium D processor and a Dell computer for playing audio, loving the old processors. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, if you have a use case for old components, like building something to just process your media center playback or something, uh, that to me is one of the, actually Patrick likes this a lot too on the team. We're just trying to get use out of older components and figure out like, is there some task I can give to this computer instead of going and buying 
some pseudo disposable like $200 media box or whatever. Toby T says, hey Steve, uh, <laughs> okay, I had to read the rest of this to see where I was going. <laughs> hey Steve, I fell asleep to your videos so many times, I can't imagine. Not criticism. Uh, also, I like your videos when I'm awake, thanks. I don't know how to feel about that. Uh, next one, Sis288 says, Sometime I listen to your news as a podcast when walking to work. Is there a chance you'll do a deep dive into the PCI lane sharing and handling on the next gen from AMD and Intel? Love from Denmark. Uh, is there a chance? Yes, definitely. That might be something that we talk about more as um, normally technology like that, I like to allow it to get some wider coverage first. So we don't have to do quite as much initial education to get everyone up to, okay, this is what we're covering today. Um, but yes, I think there, I mean, a chance, yes. I don't know if I'll get to it. Depends on who on the team is available for that kind of stuff. Last one, last Super Chat I'm reading. Detonation EMS uh, says, I, I, I was trying to figure this out. I think they just got the letters backwards. I love NG, Nexus Gamers, not just for its honesty and reviews, but for its meaningful work bringing e-waste issues into the spotlight. Thank you. Yes. I think we've brought it into the spotlight pretty well today. C allow me to spotlight the problem. The e-waste problem has been spotlit. I think that's the spotlighted. I don't know. OK, that's going to be it for Super Chats. Um, let me run through a couple of these, and we'll, we'll kind of close out here. So. Let's just uh, let's just f flip them over. It's like we're like we're playing a card game or something. Uh, let's see. This one is a Core Two Duo E4500. That's an E1200. I'm looking for anything with some provenance here. E3200, E5200. That one's a little more interesting. E6300. How is it going up? The numbers keep increasing, and I'm randomly grabbing them. Uh, oh my gosh, is it still going up? E6550. <laughs> I don't think it's going to go up past that. I'm pretty sure it stops there. Intel doesn't, uh, they hadn't invented nine yet. Uh, Intel E6550, I'm just curious. Also, we can get Razor off the screen. Well, it's in a compact. There you go. With the box and the heatsink worth more, apparently, $26. <laughs> or you could get 10 of them for 18 uh, My hopes have been shot once again. E5300, E3300, all these for a dollar. Imagine that. And it doesn't take much imagination why. Uh, E6500, Pentium G620. I'm just looking for anything super interesting before we kind of wrap up. E2200. Uh, Core 2 Duo. I think that says 6300 again. Pentium D. What is this? Oh, it's the Pentium D925. We've had a few of these now. Oh, that's gone. OK. Uh, E5200, Core 2 Duo. E1200, E, I think that says 4600. There are so many Core 2 Duos, this is ridiculous. Okay, this can be faster. <laughs> These don't need to be known. Let me check a couple. Uh, okay. Pentium from 2004. Is there anything else interesting? For sure the most interesting thing in this pile was this one. And then probably that um, Athlon, which was one of these. There's a lot of Pentiums and Core 2 Duos. Pentium E2220, Dual Core E5200, E5200. Why are there so many E5200s? Tower of Intel. Yes, it was. Uh, spot enlightened for the past tense of spotlight. Thank you. 
that makes so much sense. Let's see. E2160, I think, I think we've basically gone through all the interesting ones, like the AMD uh, CPUs. Are on a t E6700, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> Maybe there's one more. And then the thermocouple one, E6700. There you go. Great value, excellent, $8. All right, cool. I think I'm good here, I've seen enough. Uh, let me just check Patrick's list and see if there's anything I missed. I will sort his list by, it's a spreadsheet, I'm gonna do sort by price for uh, the eBay price that he was able to find a while ago. The highest value one he found, so the engineering sample and the engineering sample with the cut for thermal probing, he classified those as probably the most valuable, he's right. Pentium 4 model 511 was the best one in here somewhere. And he had that listed as $10 at the time he had searched it. Pentium 4 511. <laughs> it's lost value. Uh, anyway, I think that's kind of the list. So let me look through his notes for anything particularly interesting. Uh, let's see. There was one quad core. Uh, oh yeah, he marked the, e the Athlon 4400 Plus. He wrote one of multiple AMD CPUs to use this name. Uh, we had some 5200 Pluses. One of them had the highest frequency out of all the the 5200 pluses that were launched. Let's see, oh, we have a China only overclockable version of the E6500 somewhere in this pile. And we have an E5200 that's uh, also highly overclockable. So I think that pretty much covers the interesting ones. All right, any final super chats? No, that's, that's good, we got through them all today. Sweet. Well, I think we're good here. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. We got the the stream set up working. It, I don't think there's still time, but I don't think we crashed or dropped any frames or had audio issues. So I, I'm excited about that because uh, we're going to be able to do some more. I have a couple streams I want to do. So one of them I want to do a PC build uh, working with Patrick on it because BPS Customs sent us a terrible computer case. And I think that'll be fun because Patrick and I will be, be very um, frustrated with the case based on what I've seen so far. So that'll probably be in the coming week. Stay tuned for that. We don't, we just kind of pop these up when we feel like working on them. But uh, someone said no, no Spark CPUs, uh, not even a MIPS uh, solution. We have actually a Spark system that will probably show once we get around to building one of our new sets where we want to have some old stuff in the background for just some something cool for a shot. Anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Thank you all for joining us, for coming back to the stream. It's been a while, happy to be here. And subscribe for more. You can go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. The promo we have going uh, in terms of the CPU distribution at random is, is over basically now. So uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.